Hello! Are you guys here to figure out why lithium aluminum hydride is stronger than sodium borohydride and why sodium borohydride can't reduce carboxylic acids but lithium aluminum hydride can? Well good, you're at the right video. Um, good thing you're ready, because uh, I'm not. I'm a little tired from my last, making my last video, so just give me one second. Um, in the meantime, make sure you guys watch my last video first before watching this, otherwise this one won't make as much sense. Alrighty, so they are both reducing agents, but this guy's weaker, this guy's stronger. Why, right? So the first thing you need to think about is electronegativity, right? Um, think about aluminum versus boron. Which one's more electronegative? It's kind of harder to tell because we normally don't study aluminum in organic chemistry, so I guess I'll just tell you. <laughs> aluminum is not as um, electronegative as boron, meaning that its tug on electrons is not as strong as borons. So now that you know that, right, think about where the electrons are in the bond between boron and hydrogen and the bond between aluminum and hydrogen. Now what I'm talking about is that, is that uh, like let's say if you, draw the, if you draw the Lewis structure for a carbon-hydrogen bond, right, you can also represent it this way, you know, two dots for the electrons. So I want you to think about where the electron is in the two bonds. This is kind of like my NMR video and my acids and bases video. Some of you might recognize this way of thinking about it, but let's say the, uh, electrons are actually over here, right, for the boron-hydrogen bond. Well then, because uh, aluminum is less electronegative, it has a weaker tug on electrons, the electrons are probably actually right here. I'm being a little bit dramatic right now, but hopefully you see that the electrons are closer, the two electrons are closer to hydrogen. So the bond is weaker here. The hydrogen, it, it's easier for the hydrogen to just go, whoop, pull off the electrons and just leave and form a hydride. A hydride is just H minus, right, with, uh, because there's two electrons, and then uh, you can show it in both ways probably, but it's easier um, to just do this mechanism step here with lithium aluminum hydride because the hydrogens are already so loose, they're hanging on for dear life, they can just go, they can just leave and attack, leave and attack. Versus sodium borohydride here where the hydrogens are not as free, um, although they are kind of free, but they're just not as free as they are in the in this reagent. Okay, so yeah, so that's partially that's part of the reason why lithium aluminum hydride is more reactive because the hydrogens are all ready to go. Okay, so for the second reason, we have to look at the targets of sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, so let's analyze the aldehyde that sodium borohydride reacts with. Sometimes, the aldehyde has a resonance, right? The double bond can resonate up sending electrons up to the oxygen, giving it a negative charge, depriving the carbon of electrons, giving it a positive charge. So it's really easy for the sodium borohydride hydrogen to just pull up the electrons and go, boom, attack, okay? And I guess you could say the same is true for the carboxylic acid, right? So why can't the hydrogen do the same thing and attack, right? Um, well, there's actually a bit of a difference here because the carboxylic acid actually has a third resonance structure, so it's kind of tricky. So the third resonance structure involves the oxygen, or OH um, oxygen here, resonating its electrons over here to essentially mask, mask the positive charge and displace it onto the oxygen. Do you see? So that's, that's the difference between carboxylic acids and aldehydes and ketones. The hydrogen is not very reactive, and the carbon that would be here if it was a ketone is not very reactive. It can't provide that extra additional resonance that the OH group can provide. And this additional resonance essentially masks the positive charge, making the carboxylic acid um, more difficult to be, more difficult to react with and more difficult to be reduced down, uh, unlike aldehydes. So if, the, so if the sodium borohydride is already originally less reactive due to, its, due to its stronger bond here, right? And its target molecule is also less reactive than two unreactive, or not unreactive, but two not very reactive compounds won't react with each other, right? So yeah, um, but the lithium aluminum hydride, it's already pretty strong, so its hydride or hydrogen can find the, find the carbon and attack in, okay? So, and then when the hydrogen from here comes, it's like, whoa, wait, where do I attack? Where do I attack? There's a positive charge here, there's a positive charge there, and um, the hydrogen's never gonna attack the oxygen, but it's, it's just confused almost. You can think about it that way, okay? 
All right, and then the third reason. Alrighty, so the last reason has to deal with the counterions, actually. So lithium and sodium, it turns out that the counterions actually are important in these reactions. Um, yeah, so the role of uh, lithium and uh, sodium, right, is to basically come over here and stabilize our positively charged oxygen when it's in these forms over here. Um, both sodium and lithium can do the same job. So uh, lithium can, can come over here and do the same thing. But it just turns out that uh, lithium is better at doing it than sodium. All right. And now, why, why is this important, right? Well, it's important because if the oxygen is more stable in these forms, or like if the neg negatively charged oxygen is stable in these forms, then it, the molecule will try and stay in these forms longer. And the importance is that in this form here, right, the positive charge has been sort of like revealed. And the target, it's really easy for the hydrides to target that carbon when the molecules are in this form versus this neutral form over here. And the same is true for over here. The sodium will keep the um, molecule more in this form here with the, negative char with the negatively charged oxygen with the electron density up here. And then the hydride can just attack in. Okay? So essentially, the counterions um, help the molecule suck up the electron density up to the oxygen and expose the positive charge to be attacked by our hydrides. Okay? And it just turns out that lithium is just a better counter ion than sodium. Okay? So yeah. Um, in conclusion, sodium borohydride is not as strong as lithium aluminum hydride because one, it has a shrug as ah, blah, blah. It has a stronger bond here, so the hydrogen's not as reactive. Um, the carboxylic acid, if the if the lithium aluminum, aluminum hydride tries to react with it, the carboxylic acid has a good way of hiding the positive charge, so it's not really good at reducing it. And lastly, sodium is just not as good of a counter ion as lithium. Okay, so I really hope this video was helpful and that you guys um, found it um, enlightening. But uh, yeah, as always, if you guys like this video, make sure you like it down there and tell your friends. Make sure you're subscribed to get updated when I make new videos. And um, I guess I will see you guys in probably my Wolf Kishner video then. Okay, bye. Oops. Hello. Are you guys here to figure out why the heck lithium aluminum hydride is such a strong reducing age? Blah, 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 blah. It's stronger than, okay. So for the sodium borohydride, right, it normally reacts with a aldehyde or a ketone, right? So the aldehyde and ketone has a resonance structure where um, the double bond can resonate up, giving us a positive charge on our oxygen. Sorry, a negative charge on our, okay. You gotta do that again. I'm tired. Okay. Probably get to the reaction. Um, okay, let me do it one more time. Okay. Lithium a little. No.